Ever dreamt of filling your garden with beautiful roses? Today, we're going to learn how to do just that by propagating roses. Propagation, in simplest terms, is the process of creating new plants from existing ones. When it comes to roses, propagation allows you to not only multiply the beauty in your garden, but also pass along the legacy of a particularly cherished rose bush. This process is a valuable skill for gardeners as it's cost-effective and adds a new dimension to the gardening experience. It's a bit like magic, turning a single stem into a whole new plant. And the best part, it's not as complicated as it may seem. With a little patience and care, you can transform your garden into a rose paradise. So, are you ready to get your hands dirty and propagate some roses? First things first, selecting a healthy stem for cutting. Let's dive into the specifics. Ideally, you want to look for a stem that's about 6 to 8 inches long. This size ensures that the stem has enough length to support new growth but isn't so long that it'll struggle to take root. Now, what should this stem look like? It should be robust and healthy with a vibrant green color. You'll also want to ensure it has at least three sets of leaves. These leaves are where new roots will sprout from so they're crucial to the propagation process. The stem should also be relatively straight and free from any signs of disease or damage. No black spots, no wilting, and no insect damage. In essence, you're looking for the picture of health. Remember, a healthy stem is the foundation of a healthy rose. Once you've selected the stem, it's time for preparation. First, let's look at where to cut. Ideally, you want to slice just below a node, the place where a leaf joins the stem. This is because nodes are high energy areas where roots are more likely to sprout. Next, trim the leaves to reduce water loss and make handling easier. However, don't remove them all. Keep a couple of leaves at the top to help with photosynthesis. Remember, your cutting still needs to feed itself during the root development stage. Now let's talk about nodes. Nodes are incredibly important in this process. They are the points on the stem where new growth emerges, including roots. So ensure your cutting has at least two or three nodes. It's these nodes that will give life to your new rose plant. With the cutting prepared, we are ready for the next step. Now it's time to give our cutting a little boost with a rooting hormone. Rooting hormones, whether in gel, powder, or liquid form, encourage the development of roots on a cutting. Think of it as a motivational speaker for your rose cutting, nudging it along the root growth path. So how do we apply it? Well, it's as simple as dip and go. First, you'll want to make sure the cut end of your stem is wet. Then, dip the cut end into the rooting hormone. Be generous, but not excessive. We're aiming for a thin, even coating, not a thick layer. As you do this, remember to avoid contamination. Don't dip your cutting directly into the hormone container. Instead, pour a small amount into a separate container or onto a clean surface and dip your cutting there. And voila! With the rooting hormone applied, your cutting is now turbocharged and ready to start developing roots. With the hormone applied, our cutting is ready for planting. It's time to get our hands dirty and plant the cutting. Now that we've prepared our rose cutting and applied the rooting hormone, the next step is to secure its future home. This begins with selecting a suitable pot. Look for one that's about 6 to 8 inches deep and has good drainage. Next up is soil preparation. We're aiming for a light, well-draining soil mix. A blend of half perlite and half peat moss works wonders. Fill your chosen pot with this mix, leaving about an inch of space at the top. Now make a hole in the center of the soil, deep enough to accommodate the bottom two-thirds of your cutting. Gently place your cutting into the hole, ensuring the cut end is well inside. Firm the soil around the cutting but be gentle. You don't want to damage those precious buds. With the cutting planted it's time to create the right environment for growth. The right environment can make all the difference for our cutting. So let's delve into how we can create the optimal conditions for our rose cuttings to take root. Firstly, let's talk about humidity. Cuttings need a moist atmosphere to prevent them from drying out before they develop roots. A simple way to maintain this is by covering the pot with a clear plastic bag or placing it in a mini greenhouse. Next, we have temperature. The ideal temperature for rose cuttings is around 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. A warm windowsill or a heated propagator can help maintain this. Lastly, let's discuss light. Although cuttings need light to photosynthesize, direct sunlight can be harmful. So aim for bright but indirect light. By focusing on these three aspects, humidity, temperature, and light, we can create the perfect environment for our rose cuttings to flourish. With the right environment set, let's move on to watering and care. Watering and care are crucial in the rooting period. It's the delicate stage when your rose cuttings are finding their way, and your support can make all the difference. So, 
How often should you water? Well, the answer is simple. Keep the soil evenly moist, not too wet, not too dry. It's a Goldilocks situation really. Too much water can cause the cutting to rot, and too little can cause it to dry out. So, strike a balance. Be mindful of the common mistakes gardeners make during this period. Overwatering is a frequent culprit, often leading to root rot. Remember it's about maintaining consistent moisture, not creating a rose cutting soup. Another common mistake is neglecting to check on the cuttings regularly. Keep an eye on them, look out for signs of growth or any potential problems. With proper care our cutting is well on its way to becoming a beautiful rose. Once the cutting has rooted it's time for transplanting. This is a pivotal step in the rose propagation process. Timing is key here. Ideally, you should transplant your cuttings when they've developed a robust root system, yet before they outgrow their containers. So how do you actually transplant? Well, it's pretty straightforward. First, prepare the new pot or garden spot by ensuring it has well-draining soil and plenty of room for the roots to grow. Gently remove the cutting from its current container, taking care not to damage the fragile root system. Hold the cutting by the stem, not the roots, and place it in the new space. Fill in with soil, making sure the roots are completely covered, but the stem is not buried too deep. Water the newly transplanted rose cutting immediately, and continue to provide care as it adjusts to its new home. With successful transplanting, we're almost there. Our rose is in the ground, but our job isn't over yet. The aftercare of our propagated rose is crucial for its successful growth. It's like nurturing a child, requiring time, patience, and a lot of love. One of the first things to consider is fertilization. Using a slow-release fertilizer specifically designed for roses will provide the nutrients necessary for a strong and healthy plant. Apply the fertilizer according to the package instructions, typically once in the spring and again in mid-summer. Pruning is another essential aspect of aftercare. Pruning promotes growth, improves air circulation, and helps to shape the plant. Use sharp clean pruning shears to remove dead or damaged wood, always making cuts at a 45-degree angle just above outward-facing buds. Lastly let's talk about disease prevention. Regularly inspect your rose for signs of diseases or pests. If you spot anything unusual treat it promptly to prevent it from spreading. With proper aftercare we can ensure our propagated rose thrives. We've walked through the process of rose propagation and now it's your turn. Just imagine, your own garden blooming with roses propagated by your own hands. It's a skill that not only brings beauty to your surroundings, but also a sense of achievement and connection to nature. Remember patience and persistence are key to successful propagation. Don't be disheartened if your first few attempts don't go as planned. Like any art, it takes time to master. We would love to hear about your propagation journey. Share your progress, your triumphs, even your challenges. Every rose grower, beginner or seasoned, has something valuable to share. And if you encounter any issues, don't hesitate to leave a comment. This is a community of rose enthusiasts and we're all here to help each other. So, go ahead, grab your gardening gloves, and start your rose propagation adventure. Can't wait to see your beautiful roses. Happy gardening!